Okay, so fourth time's a charm. I have like no idea how to start this thing, so let's just jump into it. Hey guys, if you're new to this channel, my name is Justin Horniker, um, and I'm the host of the Running Through Podcast. I wanted to jump in on some things on the podcast. I like to talk about some personal stuff, not just things in the running world um, and where that intersects. Today we have a very intersecting thing. Um, so if you've been tuned into the running world, um, Gabe Grunewald and Justin Grunewald have been sharing their story. Well, Gabe's been sharing her story for a while now. She's been a cancer survivor for a decade at this point. Um, however, she's taken she took a turn for the worst last week, and Justin has been keeping everyone updated on her condition and what's been going on. It's kind of a tough story for me to talk about. I wrote a a story that I want to kind of put my face to um, going forward. So I wouldn't be as respectful to Gabe and to Justin and their families as possible. Um, I feel closer to them as I should be, and I think us in the running community are all going to have a similar story to this, because she's a... Gabe's story is very inspirational. A lot of us have a family member who might have gone through a similar thing. Um, A lot of us have gone through hard times, and her attitude through it all is very infectious. And she was a very thoughtful person, a very, I don't know, you could just tell that she meant everything she said, and the fact that she was able to stay so... Just, it seemed like she didn't put herself first in the worst scenario. Um, she was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer that she had to have surgery on. Uh, wonder of mission, it came back. Wonder of mission, it came back. Um, so anyway, I've been following her story for a while now because obviously you know about it. You know she was a she a very good runner in the sport. Um, I was there at Festival of Miles in 2011 when she won the 800 meter race. So that was fun to be able to see that in person. That was the only time I was in the same building as her, or the same facility as her. Um, And then, you know, everybody remembers in 2014 when she won the 3K at indoors only to have impeded Jordan Hesse uh, to be disqualified. And then two days later, Max Siegel would reinstate her. Everyone remembers that kind of whirlwind that went around. Um, But the big story was always who Gabe was as a person, what she's been able to overcome, um, and the fact that she was still racing on a very high competitive level was the inspiration behind it. But that's the sporting side. She had you know, times that people would be jealous of. She's a very good athlete in general, which, you know, that's usually what I talk about on this channel is athletic performances. But looking past this, the person that she was outside of being an athlete is what is What makes this not just me jumping into can't get views um she impacted my family more than her and justin will know as a as a stranger across the country um who they wouldn't be able to tell out of a crowd my so if you've listened to the podcast that's how you found the youtube page you'll know um i kind of started the podcast as a way to talk through um the feelings i was feeling regarding running, regarding being depressed, um, and a lot of that stemmed from my grandmother passing away. So she also was diagnosed with a very rare form of brain cancer, and we had a tough time dealing with it. I mean, I still, she passed away two years ago last week, so I think that's why I have been having kind of a rough time dealing with all this. Um, but we took a lot of inspiration from Gabe's journey, because seeing that her and her husband seeing her and Justin's journey and seeing her family's journey and that they're able to stay positive and stay so upbeat through it all. Um, use it to start a foundation, the Brave Like Gabe Foundation, which I'll post some stuff down below if you want to give back. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on around the running community about this. So obviously having a loved one battling cancer is incredibly hard and in my grandma's case, she was definitely battling it better than we were. And that was the problem is we didn't know what to do. Um, I have a very strange family dynamic and that my parents had me when they were teenagers. My mom passed away when I was three. So for all intents and purposes, my 
grandma was my mom for a lot of my life. Um, I have a stepmom who I love who is my mom, but she wasn't in the picture until I was six and she didn't, you know, officially adopt until I was 15. So she's been my mom, but my grandma had helped raise me for a lot of that. Um, she was somebody who I relied on for a lot, um, especially, you know, more emotionally than anything. So being able to talk to her about things and talk with her about things and not having that anymore is hard. It's very hard. Um, but Gabe's journey was something that helped me deal with that, seeing how they're able to get back and on. But that's the thing, cancer sucks. Cancer sucks. It, it really sucks because when my grandma had to go in for surgery, they took out part of her brain. So, you know, she was still herself. She was just tired, lack of energy. And then they went in, took part of the tumor, or took the tumor of the cancer cells out of her brain. And she wasn't herself anymore. Well, she, was still, she was still herself. Um, but she had a hard time remembering why you're stopping by. She had a hard time remembering short-term memory. She had a hard time uh, producing those memories. And it was hard. She couldn't take care of herself anymore. She was a very independent person before that, and she's kind of like the matriarch of the family. Um, it, it, and then you don't know how much time you have left with her. So we weren't sure if she had, you know, a, a month or five years. In fact, they told us that she would be probably had two to three months left to live, and she made it over a year. So. The fact that she was a fighter, um, she fought to the very last day, and her and Gabe shared a lot of those characteristics of not backing down in the face of it and not giving up. Um, and I think we can all learn a lot from that in our lives, not just with, with fighting sickness, but fighting adversity. Um, my grandma was a paired around of courage, I always say, and I wanna attribute that to Gabe too. Gabe Greenwald is a paired around of courage you have every excuse in the book to just give up, um, to just, you know, use, I don't even think, like, not even an excuse, like, it's there, like, all signs point to you that you should have other people taking care of you, but because you are so courageous and you can stare it in the face and come back to it um, and fight valiantly, we can all learn from that. <sighs> okay, so I just wanted to get on video and just talk about this. <laughs> um, Cause I'm feeling I'm feeling some type of way about it. I post on Instagram, I just can't get Justin Gabe out of my head. So I wanted to put my face to my words and say, Justin, I'm thinking about you. Gabe, we're thinking about you. The whole running community is thinking about you, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of runs dedicated to you today and tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna post some things down below. Just Gabe's foundation, Brave Like Gabe, um, and some other. Uh, there's been a donation to St. Jude going around as well just to kind of put everything together. Um, the running world is better for knowing you, Gabe. And we're going to miss you dearly, even the ones that you've never met in person. With that being said, uh, I just want to say um, I miss you too, and I can't wait to talk to you again. Okay. This is a little bit cathartic to me. I did not expect to get as emotional as I did. But a little bit inside view and me as a person. So tomorrow I'll have a little bit different video for you guys. Um, I'm posting a preview to the Adrian Martinez Classic. It might be a little bit more fun than what this one was. Um, but I just needed to get my words out there. So we'll talk soon. Love you guys.